Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you a futures trading platform that I use to look at quotes when I'm on the go any moment during the day for that matter. And I think that this platform provides a very quick way to view various things about futures markets like which contract is trading the most amount of volume and when is the official expiry date for a contract or expiry week. These pieces of information can help you as a futures trader to make more educated decisions about if you should be trading the front month, back month, micros, etc. I just wanted to show you various things about this platform here in this video. Full disclosure, this video was brought to you in partnership with Ironbeam app, which is the platform I'm talking to you about. And they have reviewed this video prior to me posting it. However, everything in this video I'm saying is an independent review and it's completely my opinion. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the video. Let's get on with it right now. So I'm over here on my Linux system. It's got Debian 12 installed on it. And I just wanted to show you this just because you can use Ironbeam app on any operating system because it's a web application. All right, so on some remote machine somewhere in the world, there's the RMB map being run and being hosted there, right? So I'm going to go ahead and log into that right now. I'm going to access that website. So HTTPS trade.ironbeam.com. And let's see where we go here. All right, and as you can see at the top of the screen, it says Iron Beam conquerors baby because that's what we're doing here now the first thing i actually wanted to show you guys is adding multiple symbols into a watch list at once which is pretty useful especially during rollover period and then i'm going to show you how i would use these symbols and one thing i want to show you is accessing the symbol specifications which is super useful because it allows you to see the expiry dates and the exchange margins for all these contracts so you don't have to actually go and start searching and say what's the expiry date of november crude to figure it out you can just look in this app here okay and i don't think you need to to pay for it because it's a free app by the way but um they charge for market data on the platform so if you need real-time data then of course they're going to charge you for that so i'm going to select at the bottom of the watch list i'm going to select add symbol and then i'm going to go over to the symbol that i want to add in this case which uh, let's do stock indexes actually let's do energies and let's go over to cl then i'm going to click on select range right here and then i'm going to add in a couple of different contracts i'm going to add in just these two and now at the bottom of the screen in this extremely small font that I missed at least a hundred times before recording this video, it says add two contracts. I'm going to add those in. So now that I have them in there and I want to know the expiry of the current month, front month futures contract, I'm going to go ahead and click on the three dots right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and select symbol info. And it tells me loading, please wait. So this is the November 2023 crude oil contract. In fact, this is the current back month contract. Um, and at this moment, I'm filming this, I was debating whether I should be trading the front month or the back month. And what I learned is that I should be trading the back month because the back month is about to become the front month. And I only knew that because I looked at the expiry date. And this is one way of looking at the expiry date. So for example, November crude, the last trading date is going to be October 20th at 2.30 p.m. Eastern, all of the uh, information, the initial and maintenance exchange margins. It's not showing you day trade margins here, but you can probably safely assume if you trade with Iron Beam, normally they give you something like a 10% day trade margin, but I don't really know. You should ask them about that, okay? Uh, whether you have market data or not, I'm pretty sure that this would work, okay? And I'm gonna open it here. I'm on an iPhone, okay? You guys can make fun of me if you want. And um, this is my favorite part of the whole app, which is their quote board, okay? And the reason why I like their quote board so much is because you can put in these symbols and it's really good for picking up where the volume's coming in in the market. So, for example, on this quote board, I have different crude oil contracts and different stock market contracts. And you can see if you look at the volume column, volume and open interest, you can see right there, that's the real time volume. So that one of the ways that I use this is when the market's rolling over, I'll put in the front month and the back month contracts into this app to figure out, you know, how much volume is going through on the front and back month right now and when I should be thinking about rolling over. I'll give you an example of creating a brand new workspace here. So I'll go to the main menu by tapping on the top left corner and I'm gonna create a brand new workspace and I'll just name it something. We can click on the plus icon to get started. So the window I was talking about is their quotes window. So that's the first one at the top. So once you've added it in, you can start by adding in a symbol right there and there's tabs at the bottom. So let's start by adding in a symbol here. I'll click on add symbol. So I'll add in the September contract. Then at the very bottom, I will select add. 
And if I scroll to the right by holding and dragging my finger like that, um, there's our volume and open interest. And we can already see back month is now becoming the new front month. You can see because we're in rollover period as I record this video. Now I'm gonna show you some customization. So if I click on the gear at the top right, this is where you can configure the column order. So typically what I'll do is I'll get rid of most of them and I'll drag the volume and open interest you know, closer to the beginning. And um, if you're not trading from the RMB map, which uh, we'll talk about that in a minute here, I'll typically remove the trade column out of there as well, and then I'll save it. Now, let's say at the bottom, you wanted to have a different quote board. You can add it in here in the same layout, just as a new tab. So I can click on add new tab at the bottom by pressing on the plus, and I can create a whole new watch list of different symbols there. And uh, here you can see they've configured a lot of different tabs at the very bottom here for different asset class groups. But one thing I noticed about this software is that you do need to roll over the symbols yourself in your own watch list. Uh, it's not gonna do it automatically, although it would be nice if it did. Here's their DOM or advanced trader, and it's pretty good. It's not my favorite, but one of the features that this platform has actually gave me an idea for an indicator in another platform I use, um, and that's the number of orders column. You can see um, there's a column here by default that shows number of orders. So in the size column, what you're seeing is the total amount that is bid or offered at a price level. So for example, at 45, 14 and three quarters, there's 43 contracts that wanna sell at that price. Um, but the number of orders that makes up that 43 contracts is actually 27 orders in this case now. The first time I learned about number of orders was from the Iron Beam platform, so that's interesting. And since then I created custom indicators using those fields because they're available in other data feeds as well. Um, now recently Iron Beam implemented chart trading into their software here. Um, I haven't done it so much because I use a different software to trade, but I'll show you a couple of basic examples of how that works. Um, one thing I notice is that when you open a chart, the chart trading features are gonna be on by default right away. If you wanna turn them off, you can do that. You see that little button right there at the end of where you have your time frames displayed? That's the button that controls the chart trading. So I'll click there and you can see the chart trading disappears. I disabled it, I can re-enable it right there. So when you click on the chart, it gives you a prompt for chart trading. And you can see based on the price that you click on, you get a couple of different options there. You get the option to either submit a buy stop above the current price or a sell limit above the current price. And if you click at a price below the current market price, you can see how that'll change. It'll be a buy limit below the market price and a sell stop below the market price. And right now there's no exit strategy configured. To enable one, I tapped right there where it says no strategy. Um, and then I can enable a strategy or a bracket order or something like that. I'm not gonna do it now because it's a little technical to set that up, but once you get it going, it should be pretty simple. Basically, you tap on the chart at the price you want to trade on and then you select which order. So I'll select buy stop and there you go. There's my buy stop. If you click and drag, you can get the order moving. Sometimes it's a little hiccupy because you might accidentally click and drag on the chart. You can see I clicked very close to it. It, it dragged the chart rather than the order. These are pretty much the columns that I use most frequently um, obviously the last traded price and size, the last time that it traded, the change on the day, um, the current bid and ask size and prices, uh, the high and the low of the day and the volume and open interest for the session. And what's also cool is you got the settlement price there as well, which is the prior day's closing price, prior session close. So that's pretty much all your important levels right there in a, in a quote board, all right? Let's say you wanted to open a chart for one of these things, you can just tap on it and then select open chart or advanced trader that would open the trading dom uh, so i'll select chart okay there's our chart it opens up a one minute chart that's the default right there um and you have a few default configured time frames here that you can put in and uh, so let's say you wanted to add volume to the chart you would tap on indicators then you go to add right there and you have to search for volume so let's search for volume so total volume bar volume and volume bars now what you want is bar volume so i'll select that and then I will select save at the bottom once I'm done. But before that, I'm gonna select more bars to load. So I'll select 500 bars and then I will save it and then save it again. If you wanted to make those bars look, you know, more like you're normally used to seeing them, like a histogram, you would go up to indicators again and then you can select the gear on the indicator that's on your chart like that. And then go over to display and here's where you have to change the chart type to a histogram. You can also change the color here as well. 
there's an example of your uh, volume histogram. The next thing I want to show you guys here is the spread creation tool that they have in IRB map. So I'm going to select new widget at the top right, and then I'm going to go over to spreads. Now I'm not so sure if this spread creation tool here allows you to create custom spreads like um, buy the ES and sell the NASDAQ or something like that, because that's an example of a non exchange traded spread. I do not know if this can create those types of spreads, but I do know that you can do calendar spreads and you can do exchange traded spreads very easily. Another thing I know is that on a demo account, you can't do it. Um, but on a live account, you could get the symbols. So let's do CLV.23. And let's do then CLZ.23. And then let's click on find. No results were found. Would you like to create one? And then it'll tell me spread creation is not available for demo accounts. Okay. But on the live account, it should work. Another thing that I thought was pretty cool that you can do only on the live account on IRB map is download your account statements and view your account statements directly here. So up at the top where you've got new widget, scroll down and then select statements. Once you open this window, you should be able to see um, and go back here using this calendar. Um, to any date and, and essentially generate the statement. And these are gonna be the same statements that you would normally get using the regular method of logging in, uh, which, which is using their older panel. But it's just good that you could use this, you know, to generate statements, so that's pretty good. Now, just really quickly, I wanted to share with you guys my display settings, just because in the case that you open this and you just don't know what looks good, I thought this looked okay. For me, the font size has to be extra large. Um, and then the font, Arial or Roboto looked okay, all right? And in terms of the quote speed, you can bring it up to fastest if you want, but for me, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. If any of you wanna know how the speed of this data feed compares with something like a direct uh, data feed on a uh, trading platform desktop like Sierra Chart, and I'll tell you that it's pretty damn close. I compared them multiple times. Um, obviously, because this is a web-based platform, it's always gonna be a little bit behind the desktop platform. At least that's what I noticed. It was a little bit behind, but really by barely, by like a hair, by nothing, basically. You just have to understand that there's certain benefits associated with using a web-based platform compared to using a desktop platform. Everything is server-side, so there's no chance of stop orders being canceled. Now, of course, a stop order can still be rejected by the exchange, but that's for a different reason, most likely. Um, although it's just good to know that with this type of platform, everything is the same, no matter if you log in on desktop or on mobile. For me, the most interesting part is the quote board, all right, guys? So hopefully this is clip helped you get a little bit more acquainted with this go check out RMB map I just want to thank every single one of you for watching this video and I wanted to tell you that if you're looking for a relatively very good trading platform more beginner oriented and not too complex check out trading view and you can view it in this video right here where I talked about trading view for futures trading thank you very much for watching see you in the next one